When this young mom gave up her seat to an older veteran, she just thought she was being kind. She switched seats and sat in the row behind him, but then she accidentally found out who he was and turned pale right away. Julia Bright and her daughter Carly had been sitting on the airplane for almost an hour, waiting on the tarmac for some unknown reason. Julia was getting frustrated and muttered, we're going to be stuck here longer than the actual flight. Then, an old man came on board. Julia's frustration melted away when she saw him. He was very old and moved slowly, but he had a kind smile that warmed her heart. She thought the pilots might have been waiting for him. The old man sat in the row behind Julia and Carly. Julia smiled at him and went back to cuddling her baby. But soon, she heard the old man making noises of discomfort. Worried, she turned around and asked if he was okay. He said he was fine, just that his old bones were sore from the hard seat and lack of legroom. He would also mentioned that he had a weak bladder and might need to get up during the flight, but he insisted it wasn't her problem. Julia decided to be extra kind. Since she and Carly were in the front row with plenty of space, she thought the old man might need it more, so she picked up her baby and offered to switch seats with him. The veteran was shocked by her suggestion and was hesitant to accept, but Julia insisted. She already stood at his row, urging the man to get more comfortable in her old spot. The veteran thanked Julia kindly, but she said there was no need, unaware that her biggest gift was yet to come. While switching places, Julia read the lettering on the man's hat. According to the insignia, he had served in not just one but two wars, a true hero. Julia thanked the old veteran for his service to the country before taking her new seat behind him. Then something very interesting happened. Julia was staring out the window of her new seat when she heard the sound of pages turning. The pages sounded too thick for a regular book. Curious, Julia decided to peek through the gap in the backrest. She saw the old man looking through a thick photo album. The pages were quite yellowed, indicating that the book was at least a few decades old. But the images on those pages were beyond beautiful. Julia saw multiple black and white photos of soldiers in the field. She put two and two together and figured they must have been his wartime comrades. A warm feeling of compassion welled up in Julia's heart, but it screeched to a halt when she heard the veteran sob during his look-through. Are you okay? Julia asked. The man assured her that he was fine and continued flipping through the album until he stopped at a very specific page. This choice made Julia turn pale instantly. The curious mother was still secretly watching, admiring the man's album, when she saw the picture that changed everything. Julia gasped in shock and covered her mouth with her hand to avoid making any further sounds. She became too restless to stay seated in her new chair, so she walked to the row where the veteran was sitting. She tapped the shoulder of the woman beside him who was sleeping. I'm sorry, miss, is it all right if we switch seats? I really need to talk to this man, Julia asked. The woman glanced at Julia's empty seat by the window and agreed. She planned on sleeping the entire flight anyway, so she didn't mind. Julia was glad that the woman agreed and sat down next to the veteran. The veteran was confused about Julia's choice to switch back seats again, and it didn't help that the restless mother was staring at him with wide eyes. Can I help you, miss? He asked as he scanned Julia's bewildered face. Julia replied by asking about the book he held. What is this book, sir? The man wasn't secretive about his album, so he ruffled through some pages and showed Julia its contents. I fought in two large wars for my country. The first was in 1945 when we invaded Normandy during World War II, and the second war I served in was Korea. These are pictures of those times. The man shared detailed stories of his wartime experiences with Julia, talking about battles and the strong bonds he formed with his fellow soldiers. Julia listened intently, her eyes widening with each page she turned. She asked to see a particular photo, and when it was revealed, she began to cry and hug the veteran. Throughout the flight, the veteran spoke more about the men in the photo, which made Julia even more emotional. After landing, Julia invited the veteran to the arrival hall, asking him to trust her. There. She introduced him to her father, who also became emotional after Julia whispered something in his ear. The veteran explained he was in town to give a lecture about his wartime experiences and had brought his photo album and veteran's hat. Julia and her father asked if he had a few hours to spare, as they wanted to show him something important. They stepped into Julia's father's car together, and after that, they drove away from the airport, 
Passing the hotel where he was supposed to stay, the car quickly traded the busy cityscape for a quieter suburban environment. Trees lined the streets and small, cute houses dotted the concrete pavement. The veteran asked once more where they were going, but again, Julia did not provide a clear answer. We're almost there, please trust me, she simply said. Julia also mentioned that the old man would like the surprise they had for him, but if he knew what it was, it would spoil his reaction. I'm sorry for my secrecy, but your wait is over. We're here. The car stopped in front of the smallest house in the neighborhood. It was old but homely. Julia and her daughter had already gotten out and were opening the front door when the veteran exited the vehicle. What is this place? Why am I here? The old man whispered to himself, but Julia simply invited him inside by extending her arm and gesturing for the veteran to come closer. The veteran had come this far. Turning back now would be a waste, so he just put one foot in front of the other until he stood in the house's hallway. The house had a 60s feel about it. Orange drapes hung before the windows, and a light musky smell lingered in the air. But the home's interior wasn't the reason he was invited. The old man looked forward and saw how Julia and her father stood beside a large chair in the living room. It was facing backward, but the veteran could see that someone was sitting in it. Julia ducked down and talked to the seated individual. Who was she talking to? He could only see the top of a gray-haired person's head, but that was about to change. After Julia finished talking, the seated individual stood up and faced the veteran. It was an elderly man, at least the same age as him. But who was this person? The mysterious elderly man looked up at the veteran with squinted eyes, as if trying to analyze him. But after a few confused glances, his eyes widened, just like Julia's and her father's had before. Bradley, is that you? The elderly man walked up to Bradley and hugged him intensely. What is going on? The veteran's name was indeed Bradley, but how did this man know him? Bradley stood frozen in place as the old man hugged him tightly, tears streaming down his face. But the roles were about to reverse when the old man's grip loosened and Bradley saw his face up close. Recognition hit him instantly, and Bradley broke down in tears. Now, it was Bradley who hugged the old man back, overwhelmed with emotion, and started asking questions because he had many, especially for Julia, who had started this wild journey. How did you know who I was when we were on the plane? Bradley asked. Julia smiled and said, your question has an easy answer. The young mother left the room and returned with an object hidden in her hands. The man you're hugging right now is my grandpa. He told us many stories about a guy he met during his time in the US Army. Apparently, this person saved my grandfather's life many times, and that man is you, Bradley. You were my grandfather's best friend during his time in the Army. According to my dear granddad, he wouldn't be alive today without you, and by extension, neither would my father, myself, or my daughter, Julia said in an emotional tone. Julia thanked Bradley for all that he did for her granddad during wartime and then revealed how she knew he was the right person from the start. The weeping mother turned the object she still held in her hand. It was a picture frame containing the exact same photo that Bradley had in his album. It was her grandpa's prized possession, an object that reminded him of his best friend, someone he thought he had lost forever, but apparently that wasn't the case. When I saw that picture on the plane and saw your face, I instantly knew who you were, and I also knew that I had to reconnect you too, Julia explained. Bradley was stunned by Julia's story. He couldn't believe that such a simple moment could lead to such an amazing reunion. He thanked Julia from the bottom of his heart and promised to repay her somehow, someday. But Julia didn't need any repayment. You've already done enough, she said. Bradley nodded and placed his photo album flat on the table. He flipped through it and found the page with a photo of the two of them together. Do you remember that day, Joseph? Bradley asked his long-lost friend. The 93-year-old Joseph nodded as his hand gently caressed the photo. Bradley took over the conversation at that point, explaining that the two of them had indeed been best friends during wartime. They had each other's backs, and Bradley confirmed that he had saved Julia's clumsy grandpa multiple times in the heat of battle. But during their last mission, something went wrong. A minefield lay between them and their enemy, and Bradley watched as Joseph bravely crossed it with other troops. But right before he reached the very end, a massive explosion occurred. Bradley never saw his friend again after that moment and believed that Joseph had been blown to bits that day. In wartime, a missing soldier usually means bad news, and a silent soldier often means they're dead, Bradley said. 
but his old friend Joseph had survived. Joseph explained that after an explosion, he woke up in a field hospital. Although it looked like he'd been hit by the blast, he hadn't been directly struck. Debris had injured his leg, and he was sent home, believing Bradley had died with the rest of their battalion. They were both relieved to find each other alive. As old friends, they spent the day catching up, sharing stories, and enjoying each other's company. Julia was thrilled to see her grandpa so happy again. The two men grew close once more and even spent Christmas together that year.